Hi, it's Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad here, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today, we're gonna to continue on with our 2.5 Mercury 150 horsepower rebuild. First, I just wanna mention again, go to my email at keith at outboarddad.com and you'll get a free copy, limited time only, only until October 13th, it's coming up soon, it's only next week. So you get a free copy, $20 value of my used outboard motor buying guide. So where we left off, we were kind of close to the actual piston size. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with our 100 grit stones again. As I uh, explained before, we have a straight set of stones that I know are straight for, for doing these cylinders as straight as possible. I do have older stones that I use to clean up cylinders first, if you remember from the beginning. And then we have our modified stones. So we went in with our straight zones and I did each hole to get within 3,000. So we double check with the manufacturer and we double check with Pro Marine. Manufacturer says 3,000s, Pro Marine says 4,000s. The old timer that I know for years says you better be at 5,000s because you don't know what's going to happen with this motor. You don't know how they're going to break it in and you want to give yourself that. And some of, some of the guys even said I go six close to seven is fine. If the book tells me I can be out of round at three thousandths, which we straighten that up. We're not out around at all now. It's almost back to factory specs. And then we could be at eight thousandths from factory. The reason we're making it tighter is one reason only. Uh, the manufacturer of the piston has that set range of three to four thousandths. We may go out to five, just to give it a little lo more longevity. We may sacrifice a little bit of compression, probably not noticeable too much, but it will also give us long, longevity and then a motor that can handle a little more warmer temperature from time to time, just in case someone runs over a bag or does something that overheats the motor. Had some good comments there about different reasons overheat motors. We'll get into that in some future videos. I want to focus right now on what we're doing to get this rebuild done properly. So what we did is we went in with our 100 grit. And I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see. We're going to come in now. And at the top of our cylinder, we are just about three thousandths larger, right, than the piston size. We're going to go down a little bit deeper, make sure we're at 3,000. And then we're going to go down all the way to the bottom. If you remember, this is where we use the modified stones. And we'll look at that. We're right about three thousandths right there. So we're pretty straight with our cylinders right now. That's the first cylinder. I'm gonna do one at a time now. I don't wanna get ahead of myself and think, oh, I just need a little more on this one, a little more on that one. I wanna do them one at a time. So I think it'll be a little safer, err on the side of caution and make sure. So again, I'm gonna put my mask on. I do have my modified stones in because each one of these cylinders now, I did individually and is at that 3000s mark. Remember, the manufacturer said between three and four. The uh, buddy of mine who's built motors for 50 years says you five, even six is, is good. Um, I'm going to be right at that five mark when I'm done with this. So I'm 2,000 out from my finished bore size after I hone. So we're going to make sure we're straight. We're going to hit the bottoms. I'm actually going to bring the bottom out another thousands and then meet that with our finish hone. So this way we'll have a nice straight cylinder when we're done. So the other two, we're right where we need to be. But like I said, I'm doing one at a time. So we're going to bring the bottom out a little bit further on this one. Then we're going to bring the bottom out a little further on this one and measure as we go along one by one. And then I'm going to show you a quick test to double check my measuring to make sure it's correct. I always like to double check things with other ways to make sure I'm on track. Make sure you wear your mask.
So I went in that a few times, focusing on the bottom as we talked about. Let's see where we ended up. right about four thousandths on the bottom and if you remember top is right at three thousandths so this way when i hone the top and i begin to hone the bottom i will get right in that four and a half thousandths mark i need to be so next test we want to double check at this point we don't want to go too far we're pretty sure we're right at three thousandths how are we gonna know for sure? Well, we measured with our micrometer and we measured with our dial board gauge. Now we're gonna go old school. Feeler gauge. Let's see, we'll start off with three thousandths because that's where we should be at the top of the cylinder. And my piston. So let's put it in here. I'm just gonna have it in the side of the cylinder here. Make sure you can see that. And I'm just gonna drop my piston down in there and it's tight but I can fit it in there so let's try four thousandths now so you can see it's my four thousandths I don't know how well you can see that it's been around for a few years like myself abused by me so let's put it in here and see where we're at right now I can't I could probably force it in a little further, but that's not going in there at four thousandths. So now I know for sure that my measurements were correct and my honing has been correct. So now since we have the bottom at four, the top at three, now we can begin to start to finish home. So I'm gonna go from my switch to my 200 stones. We're gonna put some oil in this now. I like to use WD-40. Uh, Jack of all sprays is another good cutting oil that we can use as well. But I like the WD-40, it's a little more liquidy and kind of runs out. So we'll make a bit of a mess here, that's okay. And first we have to finish this other cylinder, make sure the bottom is also at four thousandths. Once these three are ready, then again, I'm gonna do one at a time with the 200, then the 300 while I'm measuring, making sure I'm not going over that four, four and a half, five thousandths at, at the most. Then what we're gonna do is take our ring and put a ring in there and see what our ring gap is. If you remember, we had 120 PSI when we had, I think it was 28 or 29 thousandths ring gap. So now we're gonna see, cause this manufacturer of rings should be the same as what the book shows. So we'll check that out next. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one out. And then when I start finish honing with the 200 with the oil, we'll uh, continue on in the next video. So we're getting closer here to this side being done. I like to do one side at a time and I like to measure as I go along to make sure. Actually, let's check the other cylinders. We did say there were three thousandths. So let's do here at three thousandths. And it just fits in there at three thousandths. Same thing here. So I know when I hit my skirt, I'm at three thousandths and that's good. I could drop it down to two thousandths and make sure it slips in all the way, but really, I know this slips in nicely on each one of these, so I'm sure we're good, right? So I know now that I'm straight, that I'm getting close to where I need to be. I've double checked it with an old school method and it helps me feel better to move forward. So we're gonna continue on in our next video. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And don't forget, limited time only, $20 value, used outboard motor buy a guide by Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad. You can email me at keith at outboarddad.com and I'll send you a free digital copy until October 13th. Have a great day.